So hello again and welcome to another of our YouTube um, interviews. I am delighted to be joined by Ilona Hunter from the Stirling School of English. She's going to tell us a little bit about herself and her work at the Stirling School of English. So welcome Ilona. Hi Pauline. So to begin with, could you tell us a little bit about your background please? Well, I came to Scotland in 2005 uh, from Poland. Uh, I was planning to stay for two months. However, uh -huh. I found out I could study in college to improve my English. So I did my IELTS um, preparation course. Then I went to Stirling University to do um, the undergraduate degree in teaching English as a foreign language. Straight from that, I moved on to do my master's degree in TESOL as well. Um, then I went to China to teach English mm -hmm. uh, for 10 months. Um, I always wanted to travel, so that was a perfect opportunity uh, to do this before I settled down. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I went to Poland to teach English uh, for International House. So I ah. spent three years there coordinating um, Young Learners Department. And then I moved back to Scotland because I missed it and I missed the people, the international vibe and the friendliness. So I moved to Glasgow and where I taught English at Strathclyde University, Academic English and General English. Mm -hmm. And also at the same time, I was coordinating a team of volunteers in one of the churches in Glasgow. Excellent. Um, so that was my journey to volunteering and to teaching English as a foreign language. So now you, now, if I understand it correctly, you work with volunteers at the Stirling School of English, is that right? So do you move from Glasgow to Stirling for that work? Yes, so um, when I studied in Stirling, I volunteered with the Stirling School of English. Ah. Uh, I taught uh, Chinese learners uh, at the Stirling School of English at beginner's level. And um, I kept in touch with the school. Mm -hmm. And when the manager, uh, wanted to retire in 2018, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I found out that they were looking for a new manager, a volunteer manager. So I applied and I got the job. Um, and it's it's my third year as the volunteer manager. Brilliant. Is... So for anybody that's watching, could you give us some background and information about the Stirling School of English, what it is and what you do? So the school became a charity in 1999 and it was established by a, a German lady who got married to a Scottish uh, man and she uh, originally she was helping mum study English and it grew you know mm -hmm. and they became a charity in 1999. So the school helps um, foreigners living in, in Stirling and in, in Clackmannanshire in basically anybody who can travel to us at the moment, we are online, so it, it, we have students from Falkirk event from Edinburgh, but before it was people who live in uh, Stirling and the Clackmannanshire area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we teach um, social English from beginners to advanced levels, citizenship course. Uh, we also help with Cambridge exams like FCE, CAE, because some employers require that they want proof of English, so that uh, basically helps students to get those certificates. We are not an exam centre, but we prepare students for those exams. Um, we also work with uh, the Stirling Council, uh, so with um, their learners, they teach um, lower levels, so if a student um, and the local council is a bit of higher level, they uh, refer them to us. And again, if we have somebody who struggles with literacies, they um, refer them to the Stirling Council where they can get help. Okay. We have proper ESOL, ESOL classes there as well. So are most of your classes run or taught by volunteers? Yes, they are taught by volunteers. I forgot to say that we also organize social events because it's, oh, not cool. yeah. it's also about helping students meet friends and uh, integrate in the society and learn about the culture. So we organize quite a lot of social events like St. Andrew's Night, Burn Supper and great um, other smaller ones as well. 
Yeah. Oh, great. Because I agree, it's, it's, it's just as important as learning the language. Yeah. It's feeling part of a community and feeling mm -hmm. part of the culture that you're coming into as well. So I think that's lovely. So if I just return to my previous question, Aluna, are most of your classes run by and or taught by volunteers? Yes, I'm the only uh, person employed. I'm employed part-time as the manager to, to run the school, to coordinate um, mm -hmm. the classes, recruit teachers. And our volunteers are amazing. Some of them have been with us for even 10 years. Yeah. Um, I actually was doing some stats yesterday. And um, so we have over 10 volunteers who have been with us for more than two years. Mm -hmm. um, some, as I said, even 10 years. And we also have... Um, university students who need um, some teaching experience. So that's how I uh, I got my first teaching job because I had experience ah, in teaching. We also help university students to get some experience before they move into employment. Mm -hmm. And um, other volunteers, uh, when we are face-to-face, -face, uh, help with crash. So we have, um, last year we had six children um, so their moms couldn't let them <clears throat> at home. Um, mm -hmm. So it's preschool children. So we have uh, university students, psychology students, or primary education students. They come to us to, to get some experience and to volunteer in our crash. That's great. And we have admin volunteers who help with the office. And recently, we also got one uh, high school student doing work experience with us, uh, designing posts on social media. That's so great. There is volunteers, but the main group of volunteers is the tutors. Could I ask how many volunteer tutors you have? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I counted that yesterday because I want to You're doing your stats, yeah. Yes, 20, we have 27 tutors and three teaching assistants at the that's moment. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a um, big team. Yeah, so yeah. That's, yeah, we usually need about 30 to run all of our classes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, gr that's great. I mean... I take it because you manage a team of volunteers, you probably feel quite passionately about volunteers in the field of ESOL. Would you agree? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think it's um, uh, volunteering with, with ESOL. There is so many organizations uh, and, and it, it helps people basically use their skills yeah. and um, there is not so much pressure because there is, you know, they usually teach one or two evenings or mornings a week mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and they really want to do it. They are amazing teachers. They are motivated and they can use their skills and our retired tutors, they love it because it gives them an opportunity to leave uh, their house, to do something different, to meet yeah. other people. And, and I think if you're a tutor um, and if you suddenly ret retire, um, you miss it. Because tutoring is like a, it's a, it's a vocation. Um, it's something, you know, like, like a doc, like being a doctor, you know, yeah. you, you do whatever it takes to help the student to, uh, to learn a language or, or another subject, basically. Mm -hmm. so, I agree. Now, I also know that you were included in the steering group that wrote the new Scottish framework for good practice with volunteers and ESOL. What kind of experience was that like for you? It was amazing because we were doing something, you know, something useful mm -hmm. and something um, very tangible we could use in our, uh, in our schools, in our organizations. And it was great to work with people from different um, sectors, like from the college and from uh, the council and uh, Joe and I, we were from voluntary sector mm -hmm. as well. So it was good to work together um, with the community learning and development team uh, to, to design this and to, to help other organizations. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure if you've seen any of the feedback, but it's been very positive so far, very um, well thought of documents, usable, user-friendly, applicable, timely, a lot of people have said. So congratulations for being part of such a successful project. It, it looks fantastic. So well done. If I can go back to your volunteer team, um, can anybody volunteer for you? Is there, do you have a certain set of conditions that you ask your volunteers to have or? Well, we um, require volunteers to have uh, some teaching experience. 
and CELTA are equivalent. Mm -hmm. um, so some of our tutors, um, for example, they used to teach English in, in high schools and they came to us first they uh, obviously they observe some classes and they ah. get paired they get paired up with another experienced tutor mm -hmm. and they at the beginning they co-teach a class and then when they are ready they can take their own class um so nationality wise anybody can teach mm -hmm. um so we have um teachers um we have a brazilian teacher we had a bulgarian we had various nationalities mm -hmm. as you know it, and they usually have CELTA or, or other teaching qualifications or online TSO um, and, and yeah, and, and that's fine and students like it and I think great. No, that, it, it's great. There is a variety of different expectations with different places when you volunteer. I'm always interested to know how each other stacks up against each other, which is great. Just to finish then, Elona, can I ask you, why do you enjoy working in the field of ESOL? Um, I get to meet so many interesting people from so many countries and every day is different. Every year is different, every week. Um, and, and that's amazing. And we get to see how people progress, uh, you know, when they get a job or when they get into university. Mm -hmm. And even during this lockdown, when we had online events, we had students from previous years oh, that's uh, nice. the tutors. So they are so grateful that, you know, they finally work somewhere or, uh, yeah, they, they, they get to see their tutors who help them. And yeah, I just enjoy being with people from other countries, other uh, cultures and getting to know uh, different nationalities and um, Great. See if the stereotypes actually are true or not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and are they? <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> well, can I just say a huge thank you for finding the time to chat to us today. Um, it's great to give you an opportunity to showcase what the Sterling School of English does. I think the work you do is admirable and much needed. So thank you very much for your time, Alona. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome. Bye-bye.